Saxon Advanced Math Lesson 61.B. This is normal distribution. Another word for that is Gaussian distribution. And uh, the book introduces this with the coin experiment. And I went ahead and replicated what they had on this. And, and let me explain it a little more in depth uh, in, in putting these. And I, and I put this onto a chart format so you can see this uh, distribution. But with the, the, the experimental data, if I took uh, data like I, I have uh, uh, 10 coins and I put them in a box, I take that, that box and I shake it up really good. And if I stop at shaking it, all the coins are going to land on either heads or tails. There's, there's only two options. And if I counted the number of heads in there, experimentally speaking, this is the distribution that I should get. I should have, well, if there's no heads at all, that means they're all tails. That's probably not going to happen ever. I mean, how many times you shake it? I mean, maybe you get one, but it's, you're talking about the, the probability that's very, very low. One head, you're going to get that maybe one turn out of a thousand shakes. So if I just kept, sh I shook it, stopped, looked at it. Shook it, stopped, looked at it. And I recorded down how many of each one of those I get. If I look at it, I would say, well, uh, one head, I get about one, one shake in there out of the thousand shakes that's going to be in there. And that's going to be about 0.1%. Where I would have two heads of the 10 coins. So eight tails, two heads. I'm in about a 40 of those, or about 4%. And you look at these numbers and say, well, where are these coming from? Well, experimentally, this is about what's going to happen. And when I say about like it's going to happen, what I'm saying is, you're probably, if you did this a thousand times, you're probably not going to get 40. You're probably going to get 38 or 42 or 41, but you're going to be really close to 40. And if I did this instead of 10, a thousand times, if I did it 10,000 times, my percentages are going to line up about like this every time. If I graph that out, in a histogram, now a histogram has a couple of features to it. Let me, I'll explain what a histogram is used for in real life all the time. But a histogram allows me to show me a, show a frequency distribution. How often does that occur? So if I said, well, 25% with five heads is most often, and that's going to be about 25%, and I'm going to call this 25 percentage points, each one of them are going to step down on either side, and it's going to give me this little bump. Okay? And if I connected these, I would get just a little up and a back down, right? just a little hump. And, and that little hump there will smooth out if I did this with 20 coins, if I did it with 100 coins. And, and my distribution is going to look like this. It's more often going to happen to being that central number is going to happen most often. <clears throat> and so when I look at that, if I were to graph it out as smooth as possible on a frequency distribution, like this on a histogram, I would get this to be smoother and smoother on this little hump, if you want to think of it that way. Now, in real life where this is used, if you have a digital camera, you can turn the histogram feature on. It, it shows up in the little corner as a box and it will actually show how often each color is represented. It allows you to take huge amounts of data and, and see, oh, do I have this color represented too often? Or you can use it in black and white. It'll show you the exposure in a histogram. How exposed is this? How, what scale of gray is it? And it would show you if you have too far out on your highlights or too low on your deep spots on the picture in a histogram very quickly. So it's just a frequency distribution. How often does it occur? Now, if I were to graph that as smooth as possible, I would get this, which is called a normal distribution graph, or a Gaussian distribution. And what this does is it, allow, it shows that this is the most often, right? And it goes down and has these tails. Now, we already talked about standard deviations in the first video for today, for, for 61.a. The standard distribution I put in here on dots. Now, you realize that this, this curve, or bell curve is what it's called, could actually be squashed to be taller or spread out to be further, depending on the standard deviation. But the couple of things are going to be true in a normal distribution. Within one standard deviation of the mean, there's the mean right in the middle, right? And if I think about it, that's correct because there's as many above as below data points, right? And what is that? What is that? That's the average, the number in the middle, right? There's just as many on that side as there are on that side. And they're distributed. Well, how far are they? Remember, if you think about that standard distribution, okay, and we, we did that before, we said, well, things that are further away have more weight when we found the standard deviation, but we find out experimentally and in just normal observation that this standard curve happens a lot. 
And what will always happen if it's normal distribution is that within one standard deviation of the mean, that means from here to here and from here to here. So this is plus or minus one standard deviation. That 68% of the data, over half of the data, way over half of the data is gonna lie within one standard deviation of the mean. That's really important. That allows us to say, let's look at our, our data here. Is that true? Uh, look at that, yeah, uh, oh, that's over half the data. Right there, one standard deviation away. Two standard deviations, or two sigmas, Wait, okay, so here we're going from here, one, two away. You're going to get 95% of the data. That's nearly every bit of the data will be within two standard deviations of the mean. And I didn't put the third one on the graph up here, but if I jumped out one more standard deviation, you're gonna get greater than 99% of the data will be within three standard deviations of the mean. And when we say within, we're saying we don't care if it's to the left or the right of the mean, we're talking about how far away it is. So this is an absolute value, if you wanna think of it that way, uh, of the distance between from here, positive and negative. Now, when I look at that, let's look at 61.2 and we'll see how this works or plays out in an actual problem. They said that they have a normal distribution with a mean of 100. So we know the average is right there at 100. So we know this number right here is 100. And they said one sigma or one standard deviation is five units away. So the distance from here to here is five. If this is 100 and this is five more than that, that's going to be 105. If this is 100 and that's 5 less than that, it's going to be 95. So within one standard distribution, within one sigma, I'm going to have 68% of my data between 95 and 105 if it's a standard normal distribution with a mean of 100 and a sigma of 5. 95 to 105. If I look at it and say, well, within two standard deviations, so we'll go here and we said 100. And then we said plus five is 105, plus five more, that's two sigmas, that's 110. And then 100 minus 10 is 90. So 90 to 110 is going to represent 95% of the data. So and that's where, what we're looking at is we're saying, hey, 95% of that data for a standard normal distribution will lie between 90 and 110, 95%. The last one is they say, well, we're gonna find this between three, right? And we're gonna say three times our, our standard deviation, which is 15, Add that to our mean, so 115. 100 minus 15, or so 85. So 85 to 115 will have a standard, uh, uh, will have over 99 or approximately 99% of the data will lie within those numbers. And that's as long as you have a normal distribution. Now, we we're saying normal distribution. Let's talk about if it's not normal, okay? Here we have a negatively skewed uh, uh, standard uh, deviation. And, and uh, look at this. And, Everybody wants to go the opposite way. They say, well, it looks like it's going, it's skewing the right. Well, it's not. It would be normal, except that instead of coming down here, where it normally would come down, right, and they started, it has more data on the negative side than what it normally would, right? Because a normal, and this is not a very good drawing here, but if I were to look at that, that would be the normal, right? And this is being skewed to the left. And the reason why it's being skewed is I have more data on this side right, the, uh, the area under the curve here, there's more on this side of the uh, center or the mean than the other side. So this is gonna have a negative skew. The opposite is gonna be a positive skew. And then I have something that's a little bit different. The word mode means, is, is French, it's uh, from fashionable, it's the most popular, if you wanna think of it that way. So and that's where the word mode comes from. These are, the mode of them are skewed to the left and right. This is called bimodal, bi meaning two, like bicycle or two wheels. So bimodal has a hump, like a camel here, a couple of humps. And what that means is you have two modes on this data. And these are a little bit more uncommon. Thankfully, we don't have to work with them as often in this level of math, but we do use quite often uh, sigma, and we're going to, they'll ask you questions like, where, where is the data distributed? Well, it's you know 68%. You'll want to memorize these three uh, uh, for sure. Within one standard deviation is 68%, within two is 95, and, and within three is greater than 99. You'll want to memorize those percentages. They, they will uh, 
ask you to apply those percentages to a complete total data set as well. So you'll want to be able to work with those. Uh, it's just one of those things you're going to tuck away uh, in the back of your memory and pull out when you need that. And that is there, how far or how's the data distribution done on a standard normal uh, Gaussian distribution.